Hey, um, so I'm here. This is Ryan. I'm here with Trisha, and Trisha is a client of mine. And so she just did her TEDx talk last week. It was a virtual event. Um, we're recording this in, I think it's April, is it April? April now? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's uh, kind of April 2021. Um, so Trisha, you just did your TEDx talk, your first TEDx talk. Um, so I would love it to share your experience with everyone else watching this because like a lot of the things that you were dealing with um, before working with me and probably a lot of people are, are dealing with right now. Um, so anyway, first off, congratulations on your TEDx talk. Um, it's really cool to work with you. Uh, why don't we start out? I'd love to, for you to share, like, who is Trisha? Um, your background, um, things like that. So people have some context about who you are and then we'll dive right in. Okay, so um, I'm Trisha Kager and I've worked in the construction industry. I'm an executive vice president for a construction company here in Texas, Jordan Foster. I've been in the industry for 20 years and I'm one of the 1% of women that navigated successfully into the C-suite. So a career into the C-suite in construction. Um, I'm also, um, I'm at the point in my career that I really wanna give back and open the doors for more women and diversity. So I wrote a book, I'm a writer as a hobby. I wrote a book called The B-Words, 13 Words Women Must Navigate for Success. And it came out last year during the pandemic, <laughs> which was fun. And, uh, but it's really just about how can I um, give my advice to, to women and uh, who want to pursue a career in non-traditional roles in the workplace and really get to the point where do we re even need to have the term non-traditional roles in the workplace? So if I have anything of insight or value that I can give back, that that's, was my goal with the book. Awesome. Yeah. So actually you've got, You've got two books, not just one. I do have two books. Um, and <laughs> yeah, so one of them was uh, was like an ode to was a kind of like an ode to your grandma, actually. Absolutely, uh, yes. crazy uh -huh. grandma Peggy. Um, so <laughs> people have to watch your your talk to and they'll get they'll they'll hear more about her story. Um, so re if you think back to the moments before you booked a call with me um you saw some of my stuff obviously and there was uh there was stuff racing through your mind about deciding whether or not to like really do a tedx talk and take it seriously and take action on it um what were some of the things that were going through your mind as reasons why you wanted to do a tedx talk like what was it that made you decide you know what like this is this is my biggest reason why so Getting the book out, um, the B words book in 2020 was was definitely a challenge, and I'm very much um, an experienced writer. It's it's what I love to do, um, and I've been speaking in the industry of construction and risk management for sa and safety for for many many years. Um, but I was very intentional about wanting to do something specific to uh, how can I get the word out about my book but also set a personal achievement and a personal goal. And so to me, the gold standard is um, TED, TED, TEDx talks or TED talks. And mm -hmm. I thought, well, if I could convey a message that I, I believe can make a difference and is important and that, that would resonate with people, um, that would be a goal that I would set for 2021. Um, but I also know that I have a lot of limiting beliefs about speaking and I have a lot of, uh, I, I'm also an ex busy executive. So, you know, those were all the barriers that were getting in my way. And for years, I had thought, even before the book came out, I had talked to, to myself. I had thought, wouldn't it be great if I would be able to put myself out there and do a TED talk? And actually um, I had done similar things like that in the, in, in the industry conferences that I speak at. Um, but I didn't really know if I, I could do it or that they would ever select me. And so when I said, okay, well, let me set this goal that I really want to accomplish this, but then how do I do it knowing that um, there's time restraints, there's limiting beliefs and confidence restraints, mm -hmm. and then also making sure that the message would resonate with a larger audience. Yeah. Um, well, what was it that made you like, despite all those limiting beliefs, right? Like, <laughs> Will I get selected? I like all that kind of stuff. Um, what what was it that made you believe in yourself and go like, yeah, like even even with all that crap, like yeah, I know I can still do this. 
Well, so for one, um, I had applied before and never even heard back from anybody and, you know, didn't really know exactly. I just kind of threw it out there, right? It was a few years ago, um, but never heard anything. Mm -hmm. So then I kind of started, of course, you get online and I love TED Talks and I'm, I'm constantly, that's kind of my go-to when I want to look for either inspiration or I want to learn about a new, uh, a new concept or whatever. Um, and so, of course, the limiting belief is, and I've struggled with this my whole career is, which is interesting because I've been very successful, but it's still a limiting belief, the talk in my head about, well, what's, what do you have to share that would be so interesting? Um, and then also, how do you go about doing it? It seemed like because I had tried before and never got there, even if it was just one time, I kind of had that limiting belief, well, this must be just for these the top echelon of people that are mm. so brilliant, mm -hmm. um, they would be the ones that get selected and, and I'm not there yet. So, so those were the kind of self-talk that was going on in my head. <laughs> yeah. What was on the other side of that? Like what made you, what made, what, what was, what was the, um, the empowering belief that you had that was stronger than that? Or was it, was it like a, like, was it like a, if I don't do this now, like, screw it like i'm going all in um because like something had to beat out that those limiting beliefs right well so i decided probably in december you know wouldn't it be great to do one next year let's try it right and mm -hmm. see but then i really didn't want to go into the abyss of sending applications that i'm not sure is is in the format that that would that would get um at the attention of the of the planners and then I, I think I found your, um, your Facebook, I believe it was Facebook. Yeah. Ad. Yeah. I do Facebook ads. Yeah. And so it kind of popped up one night when I I'm always, you know, in the evening trying to calm my mind and all of a sudden it popped up and it grabbed my interest. And a lot of, I thought, well, it doesn't hurt to fill out the form. I, I, I think I filled out a form. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, let's just see what this is and how this would work. And, and then the next thing, you know, I'm on a call with you and you're asking me all these questions. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is really true. It's like, do I want to dabble in this or do I want this to happen? <laughs> and um, I really believe that I think a lot of it had to do with if this is something that I'm intentional about and I believe in, and I really believe in the message of my book and I've done all this work and I really believe at my age that I want to give back and open doors for other people to enter non-traditional industries, then how is the best way to get the word out? Um, so when we had that call, you asked some very intentional questions and it, it was really important to me. And I think that solidified how important it was to me. And then identified, looking back, I'm like, okay, so I have a lot of limiting beliefs about this and I need to change them. And so mm. change to why not me? If not me, who? Mm. In fact, I say that in my TED talk because uh, it it because we all can sit and say I'm too busy, I don't have time, I'm um, I, I my message won't resonate with the, with the larger audience. Um, this isn't for me. I'm not the best speaker. Those are all the things that go on in my mind. I'm assuming everybody has that inner voice, and that we're all full of limiting beliefs. But those can often be excuses to hold us hostage for what we really want to accomplish in our lives so cool okay so let's let's fast forward a little bit we hopped on the call right um what made you what made you want to work with me uh, rather than you know well, I, I, i'm very impressed so i i admire people who are very um organized mm -hmm. and honest and uh, thoughtful in in saying okay this is someone that if I work with you, that I, that these are the traits that I look for in, in a client, if you will. So that was kind of the, what so part of our conversation was mm -hmm. you're looking for people who are going to do what they say they're going to do, that they're going to live in integrity, that they're going to, they're going to do the work, right? Cause this isn't, yeah. there's a lot of work. There was a lot of work that went yeah. on. It, like, yeah. it was a very process, but I had to make a commitment and I am a very committed person. If I say I'm going to do something, then I'm going to give it my all and I'm going to make the time, even though I'm busy and I have um, a lot of responsibilities, 
if I make a commitment, I'm going to take care of it. And I appreciate it that you make that commitment because there's a lot of stuff out there that's watch this video or, and we'll see you later. And that, that wasn't it at all. It was, it was intentional and I liked that. And I needed the discipline that you, you provide. So cool. you're going to make me sound like a, like a drill sergeant or something. <laughs> The, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, uh, I know for me and people of, and we've talked like before about what I'm doing in my life, uh, of course, but for me, like stuff like this is, um, the discipline is not a, is not a, a bad thing necessarily. It's, it's really good. Like it's, we're, we're trying to craft the best message that we can mm -hmm. like together, not do the minimum <laughs> that to just to, like the barely squeak in. Right. Because like the message is, is is, is, you know, it's for the audience and it's also for you. It's to show you like, hey, Trisha, your ideas are really good. Right, exactly. Um, so I'd love to ask, so you applied for, I think like, was it two events? I only applied, yeah, I applied for two and they, yeah. it was it was very serendipitous to the timing. So there wasn't any because, you know, of course, 2020 really changed mm. a lot of stuff. Mm. Um, and that was a limiting belief too. It's like, well, there, there won't be any, right? And um, so I kind of thought, the opportunities would come out towards the fall or the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, and then out of the blue, because I was following um, the talks in my local area, I live in the Dallas area, um, they started popping up and it was like, oh my goodness. And then I remember actually um, emailing you, hey, should I, do you think I should apply for this? And it's like, of course you should. <laughs> so, um, so I applied for two and yeah. um, I, I got TEDx UTD. Yeah. Okay. And so this is cool too. Um, you told me this, like, la it was a, like, wasn't yesterday. It was last week. Right. What did they, yeah. what was their feedback to you about your idea? Well, it was just very, um, exciting for me because, uh, when I was doing my practice practice session, um, the, uh, they told me, uh, your idea was a no brainer because it was so well written and, and they just saw it and they thought, this is great. It's a no brainer. You're in. So all of those limiting beliefs of how do I fill out the form? What's my message? You know, all of those things yeah. that you're, or is anybody going to, is anybody out there? Is anybody going to read this? Yeah. All went away because it was basically giving them exactly what they needed to select my talk, which I thought right. was extremely powerful. And it also um, resonated that you you did what you said you were going to do. You were going to get me to yeah. where I could submit an application that I was proud of, and that that would that would resonate with the speaker, the the planners. Totally. And this is I said this to you before. Um, I think this is quite it's quite cool though because um, it's not just a no brainer for them. This is like they're looking at a lot of people's ideas, a lot of like probably hundreds of people applied for that event. And, and so if it's a no brainer for them, it's a no brainer for, Hey, want to go on a podcast and share the same idea or do like a mentorship with young women in a university setting and, and share the same kind of thing. Like it's a no brainer everywhere, which is, it's quite cool. Right. Um, so, uh, in terms of, yeah. So how does it feel? How did it feel to get that invitation to get that email? That's like, Trisha, congratulations, you know? I was, I was thrilled. I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. I felt, I, I, you know, I wrote a book called the B words. It's a bucket list. So you put, I put TEDx as a, as a bucket list item and very quickly I was okay. Now I'm on the way. Now I got to go do this. And, but it was a very good feeling and I was so excited. And, um, and then just the whole experience of working, it, it, it was a university group and they were just the most intelligent and kind and just really forward thinking young students. And, I just loved every minute of it. It was great. That's cool. So, Is yeah. there anything else that, um, yeah, you want to share about what it's like to be a TEDx speaker um, or what it was like going through the whole process of working with me that you think would be beneficial for people watching? I think that one of the things that was really important is that I was very, you know, I wrote a book on women's leadership. And so I felt like my audience I, I wanted to speak to people who, as you refer to them as advocates, people mm -hmm. who agree. Um, your process helped me understand that there's also an audience of people that we want to maybe give them an awareness or an opportunity to potentially shift their mindset. 
And that just creates a much more global perspective of everything. And it requires a lot more thought and effort rather than just speaking to people who already agree with me. Right. Just speaking and that, to women. Yeah. And yeah. so I thought that was a really powerful part of, of what we went through to, to get ready for the, um, the proposal that I, that I turned in. And then it also required me to do a lot more research and a lot more not not going back and doing homework that but just thought thoughtfulness yeah. and thinking about okay what is my message and because if you're only talking to people that agree with you then you're kind of in a in an echo chamber and in a vacuum yeah. and so to me that was a very 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 a turning point for me in in my thought process and I'm going to use that going forward with um, things that I do in my work and my business as well. Um, and then repurposing it too, like I'm it, my, uh, the, the script for the TED talk course was six pages long. I am a writer, right? So it was very, very long and had to really hone it down because it is 15 minutes. So every word counts and you have to, or 18 minutes is the max and mm -hmm. really be thoughtful about that. You provided a lot of great feedback, just getting ready. But even when I submitted the proposal and then it was, okay, are you ready? We had already done all the late, the legwork, the outline was there, the content was there. It was just a matter of now I'm just getting ready to present it, but I'm good. It is going to be published as an article for, um, ermy.com, which is international risk management Institute. It's going to come out. Ah, next. Cool. Okay. So, so th like you said, repurposing yeah. and yeah, yeah. And word out. And, and so, that was really exciting too. So that's cool. Yeah, the um, that's cool because then you can use the credibility of, of course, like your stuff mm -hmm. specific to the risk management industry and construction and that, right? Um, yeah. And then TEDx combined with that, there's not a lot of people that have that combination of things. And so again, yeah, this is all um, that I know that talking points worksheet that you've got, like that again, each of those points could be a whole mm -hmm. other article, I'm sure. Um, or, or something on a, in a talk or a workshop or a whatever. So. Maybe I'm going to write another book. I don't know. <laughs> My mind is going in all different curves. But I would use this process for things. I've already used it just in very, in, in my mind shift. You know, you kind of learn a way to look at things from a different perspective. And um, being in the construction industry and, and on the risk management side of things, you always have to look at, what is your message? It's not just about what what safety people think or what if we're not right. getting if we're not thinking about how this is going to impact operations. So your process gives you that kind of ability to do that mind shift, which I thought was really important and That's useful. Cool. Not just for TED Talks, but for anything. Yeah, for everything else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's um, that's totally true. I think um, you know, because I think I think uh, a disservice would be to say, all right, Tricia, let's just like work on an application, just hammer it out to a bunch of events mm -hmm. as soon as possible. Uh, then you would lose all that, all that benefit, right? All that ability to reuse it for a book or uh, risk management talks or this article over here or, um, or whatever else. So that's, I love that you found different ways to repurpose the same principles mm -hmm. in your job. And, and don't, don't get me wrong. You, you're not a drill sergeant. Everything <laughs> that you I'm like a to, fun drill sergeant. <laughs> you have very specific things to do each week. And yeah. it didn't make any sense, right? Because you think, okay, I'm going to apply for a TED Talk. Let's, let's start writing. Let's get this done. And then it's like, no, you're all over. It's okay. Where are we going with this? And then you break it down into little bite-sized pieces every week. And it was fascinating. It was a really cool process. I was, ex I was happy to do my homework every week <laughs> that's cool i'm glad i'm glad that like each of the elements taught you something about how to like you and yeah that's the purposes and mm -hmm. i think that's um you know i I've, we've talked before about like other goals that we we collectively have um i think that's the best part about all this kind of stuff is like in my iron man training it's like i can reuse that principle for other stuff in life and it's like or, or you know it's it's cool so um, is there anything else that you want to say before we wrap? The other thing I wanted to mention is that um, you've done it too. So I wanted to get with someone. You you did this yourself. You were mm -hmm. successful. You've delivered a TED Talk and, and um, 
you found a very successful way to, to do it. So why reinvent the wheel, right? right. So if this is, a, if this is a, a great process to get you to where you want to be, and it takes the guesswork out of it, then I say, go for it. And now, now being on the other side of it, I'm extremely excited and proud that, that I did it. I did it. It was very quick um, because I think that had a lot to, your process had a, a lot to do with that success of it and that it resonated so well with the, with the people that were planning the event. And I'm just very grateful that, that I found you and you had a Facebook ad and it was. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what did your, oh, one of the things um, I know I, I always ask people is like, who's the first person that you were going to tell when you get the email, right? Uh, I think you said you, you told your husband first, right? Or who did you, was it your kids? I told my sister first. You told my your sister, sister first. Okay. And I what talk did, all, we're just constantly talking. <laughs> what, did, what, did, what did the people around you say? What, what was their response to your whole? Yeah, everyone was very excited for me. And they're like, wow, that was, you know, she knew I had set, set that as a personal goal. My sister mm-hmm. and I are very close. We talk, her, she's, uh, her, she's named after my grandmother. Peggy, there. Yeah, I, yeah, your sister Peggy, yeah. She's a strong woman too, named Peggy. Yeah. And she's just like, wow, that you did it. Oh my God, that's great. My husband, he's always thinking, um, he's an engineer. So he's like, what is she up to next? You know, cause I'm working full time. And then I wrote a book and then I said, I'm going to do a Ted talk. I, that's my goal for 2021. And then just like within a few weeks, I'm like, guess what? And he's like, that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> all these people are going to think yeah. like, this, no. this, she's cheating or yeah. something. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, did you tell your husband that I have a, did I tell you that I have an engineering background? I did. Yes, I yeah, did. Yeah. So that was, I mean, one of my, uh, one of my frustrations was that a lot of like an English class, <laughs> it <laughs> always felt like this was all guesswork. Like you're either a good, you're either good at this or you're not. And I mm-hmm. knew math. I could, I could do math, uh, math, physics, all that stuff made sense to me. So. Um, if your husband went through this process, he would be like, oh, okay. Like an engineer yeah. built this. <laughs> like, it would just be very clear. Yeah. So, I think, yeah. I think, yeah, anything that is process oriented. Right. This, then this, yeah. and this. Yeah. What is your, um, so you do a lot of work with younger women. I know that you've, you've spoken with groups of like university or young professional women. Mm-hmm. Um, what did your kids what did your kids say when you've done this? So, you're like so kind of your, you're kind of their, you're kind of their crowd and uh, professionally yeah. as well. Yeah. So my son's going to graduate from law school um, in May, and um, he was, he's like, mom, that's, he just thinks it's awesome, you know, that that I wrote a book, and she, he's always like, what are you up to next, you know? And and he thought it was really exciting. And then my daughter is studying engineering, so she was part of the catalyst for writing the book because I want to, like I said, give back and open the doors for women to be able to do whatever they want in life. Mm-hmm. Why should gender have anything to do with if you wanna be an engineer or if you wanna be a teacher, if you wanna be whatever. So those limiting beliefs and that's what I talk about in the B words um, and of course in the, t- in the TED talk as well. So, but she was so excited. And then I had just been down to at, at Texas A&M mentoring her charge group, which is a group of young women that, um, that it's all about wellness and mental well-being and physical well-being and exercise and mm-hmm. leadership. And so I spoke to their group. And so they were all excited about it too. And she, she posted on Instagram and put me all over the place. So That's she cool. had to home to be there um, on Saturday to, to support me. So that was awesome. It was just great. So, That's cool. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, yeah, that's all, that's all the questions I got for you. So thanks, Tricia. We'll link to your, uh, your books and your TEDx talk and stuff below. And okay. if anybody's out there, kind of like Tricia, and you're like, yeah, I've got this thing and I'm not sure if I can do it or not. Uh, I assure you, you probably can. I, especially if you've got like, I mean, certainly not everybody can do a TEDx talk. I think that would be kind of cheapening it if we made that claim. But if you've got like, I mean, you've got books and, and you've got, if you've got like a coaching business or you've done mm-hmm. speaking like this before, I mean, you've got so much already, uh, then definitely I will leave a link below. You can book a call with me. And uh, I'm like the fun TEDx drill sergeant. <laughs> not really. Uh... Okay. okay an amazing time and um yeah, and it's fun. very it's great a, it's a fun it is a fun process and i think it's really it's transformational too like it changes your perspective on 
what's mm -hmm. possible in the world, which is really cool. No doubt, no doubt. And I, if anybody has an idea worth spreading, because that's what Ted's all about, right? And you need, and and you just need someone to help you, guide you through the process and make it easier. I would say that Ryan's your guy. <laughs> cool, so. appreciate that. All sure. right, thanks. Thanks, Tricia. All right, all right.